What's up, sports to the bone family? What's up? What's up? A blessed Friday evening to you all, and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing okay. All right, coming up in this one, my viewers and subscribers. Earlier today in the IPL, it was Kyron Pollard versus Azari Joseph as Mumbai Indians and the GTs did battle. Right, we also see where India earlier today sent out some information as it relates to their tour of the West Indies. So we now know the dates and also the venues that um, the ODIs and the T20s will be played. So make sure you stick with us until the end of this video so you can get all the information. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a like and drop a comment. All right, let's get straight into the IPL recap now. I, I, actually, I actually saw bits and pieces of the game, didn't get a chance to watch it in its entirety, but I saw majority of Mumbai Indians innings when they were batting. So that means I got a, uh, that mean I got a chance to see when former West Indies captain Kyron Pollard was batting. And boy, he was bamboozled today again by the spinner Rashid Khan. I tell him my viewers and subscribers, it wasn't, wasn't a good look at all. Um, they eventually came away with the victory though, Mumbai Indians. That is so another victory for them, another victory under their belt. Now, um, Alzari Joseph, he did his thing. He bowled, he didn't bowl too badly, you know. I mean, he only picked up one wicket, gave away some runs, but he bowled a very good delivery to get rid of Ishan Kishan, a slower delivery that basically um, had Ishan Kishan lobbing the ball in the hand side, you know, and, and giving up a catch. So um, Azar was there uh, doing his thing. But Rashid Khan was really the man that stepped up today um, with the with ball in hand for the GT. So as I said, uh, Mumbai Indians, they batted first. And they were able to post a total of 177 for 6. 177 for 6, my viewers and subscribers. They actually had a very good start. You know, they started off, I think they went up to something like maybe about 74 before they lost the first wicket. All the way up to 74. Rohit Sharma and, um, and, and his opener there, Kishan. They were doing extremely well, my viewers and subscribers. At one point in time, seems as if they were well on their way. To, to, to put up something solid. You understand? We're talking about maybe something close to 200. But after those two batsmen were removed, things did not really um, materialize as re are, are, as re relates to you know them getting up to that. Now, uh, Rashid Khan, as I said, uh, no, Kishan. Ishan Kishan, he actually had 45. He had 45 from 29, you know, and um, Rohit Sharma, he was actually the first to go getting 43 from 28. Now, um, Rashid Khan, he was responsible for dismissing um, Rohit Sharma. Two big, two big wickets for Rashid Khan, as a matter of fact. He had, he had um, Rohit Sharma, LBW, and he was also responsible for, um, for Kyron Pollard. You understand it? That after those two guys got dismissed, uh, a mini collapse basically started, you know, with the lights of um, Yadav coming in, getting 13, Varma coming in, getting 21, and Pollard. As I said, you know, he didn't get anything much. He struggled. He only had four. Faced a couple of deliveries. Um, he was set up by, by Rashid Khan brilliantly. Couple of gogs going into him. Then another one, you know, then he got the one to just pitch and move. Um, move away from him. Bowled him all over the place. And you know, he went down to cover the ball, but played down the wrong line, my viewers and subscribers. You know, um, I tell you, he was looking to be defensive. Seems as if he wanted to get an eye in, then attack. But he was just, um, he was just bamboozled by the by the spinner, Rashid Khan. There, you know, I mean, it's a, it hasn't been the, the best IPL season for Rashid Khan so far as it relates to taking wickets. You know, from time to time, he is pretty economical. Usually very economical, but you know, it was good to see him stepping up and getting a couple of wickets today for his team. It was Tim David. You know that came in and basically you know uh, made sure that mumbai indians were able to finish strong you know he had a couple of lusty blows finished up getting um 44 he had 44 of 21 with a couple of massive sixes you know down the ground some nice fours he, he, he was brilliant he was brilliant see watching him hitting down the ground you understand and um it was big well i won't say it was because of his power hitting while they were able to win the game because you know the run, the run scored by Roy Sherman, Ishan Kishan at the top there equally as, as important, you understand? But it was good to see him coming in and getting some runs in the latter part there to push the team all the way up to 177 for 6. So Rashid Khan, he finished off with 2 for 24, getting Pollard and Roy Sharma 
out, as I said, Pollard um, get, being bowled all over the place and Roy Sharma getting um, trapped leg before wicket. Now, Azari Joseph, as I said, he, he was only able to pick up a wicket and um, he, he didn't bat when it was his time, when um, his team, when it was time for his team to bat, he didn't actually bat. So, um, you know, that he, he contributed in the field as it relates to bowling and, and, and fielding and things like that. So, after looking like they would have had 200 on the board, Mumbai Indians really, really fell apart, crumbled. At the half time, at the halfway mark, um, you know, innings break when they interviewed Tim David, he seemed a little bit down as if he thought, you know, they maybe fell short by probably 10, 15 runs. But it so turned out that the bowlers came in and they were able to, to basically um, do a thing. Uh, I, I didn't actually see the second innings, so I won't be able to say whether or not G, the GTs actually gave it away or it was some brilliant bowling. But one thing I know is that um, they, they actually got off to a good start based on what I'm seeing here. You know, they had 106, I think, before they lost the first wicket. 106 um, with Shubman Gill getting 52 and uh saha getting 55 so those two guys put on 106 before the last first wicket there so that was very very good but um apparently things just fell away in the middle order there and they were not able to do much after that pandya captain pandya he didn't make anything much he had 26 miller 19 uh 14 he remained not out but was unable to carry it home you know with uh david miller there I, I can almost bet that they were thinking that, all right, still have it in the bag here. Miller will carry it home for us. But um, that wasn't the case. You know, I guess they had some um, Mumbai Indians had some good bowling. I think they, based on what I was seeing on the internet, as I said, I didn't watch the last part. The last part of the, um, of the GTs chasing. I think they wanted um, maybe nine or something like that of the last over. And, and, it, and they weren't able to get it. Don't quote me on that part though, guys. But they weren't able to get it. You understand and um that basically that basically gave mumbai indians their their what, what is that their second victory of the campaign very weird saying that eh uh pollard he actually bowled he had one wicket for 13 runs off two overs so Kyron Pollard doing some work with the ball. You understand? Helping out his team there. Being economical as usual. You know, always good to see a man bowling two overs and just get giving away 13 runs and uh, taking one wicket. You know, um, just, I don't know, probably just working in back the knee. I guess we know that uh, Pollard knee isn't as strong as how it used to be. But very good to see him bowling a couple of overs. As I said, I didn't see it, you know, but um, good that he bowled a couple of overs and was able to pick up a wicket for his team. Ashwin, he finished off with two for 29 and uh, the GTs fell, Titans fell short by five runs. So very close, but um, as they would say, so close, but yet so far, you understand, and, and they lost the game there. So um, congratulations to Roy Sharma and his team for picking up another victory in this year's staging of the IPL. All right, so yeah, that, that I guess that just about do it for the IPL recap. So the final thing that, that I want to zoom in on now my viewers and subscribers, I uh, don't know how many persons remember, maybe about uh, three or four days ago, I did a video talking about um, India, you know, a report coming out of India that they, they were, you know, they are going to be touring the West Indies and he was speculating that a couple of games will be played in Florida and the confirmation is actually out. The, uh, the, the, the BCCI, they put out some information and I have it right here written down for you guys. So I'm going to be reading it out for you so you can know exactly when the games will be played. Trinidad and Tobago seems as if you guys fell in the honeypot. This time around, a lot of cricket going to be over your side, your, your neck of the woods, you know. All right, so um, three ODIs will be played, as I would have indicated in a, in a previous video, and um, five T20 internationals. So three ODIs and five T20 internationals. So the first ODI will be played on the 22nd of July at Queen's Park Oval. The second one, the 24th of July at Queen's Park Oval. And the third one, the 27th of July at Queen's Park Oval. So the 22nd, the 24th, and the 27th. You can mark down those dates on your calendar, right? The three T20 internationals between West Indies and India are slated to go ahead right about that time. 
right? As it relates to the five, um, uh, well, no, sorry about that, guys. The three that I just gave you, those are the ODI, ODIs, right? So the 22nd of July, um, Queen's Park Oval, 24th of July, Queen's Park Oval, and the 27th, um, uh, Queen's Park Oval. Those are the ODIs. I, <laughs> I'm not sure if I had said T20 before. So those are the ODIs. Right, the ODI games will be played right there. Let me make sure I carry it because I know that you guys are going to cry out and say, Sports to the board, where you get that information? <laughs> so those three, right, the ODIs will be played there. And the five T20 internationals, no, those will be, will, be, will be shared a little bit. So the first one will be played on the 29th at the Brian Charles Lara um, cricket, uh, cricket Academy. So uh, that our cricket stadium that will go on there. Uh, the second one, the 1st of August at Warner Park. That's, that's the second one, the 1st of August at Warner Park. The third one, and um, we'll go on the 2nd of August at Warner Park once again. And the fourth one will, play, will be played on the 6th of August at Fort Lauderdale. Right? The fifth one and final will be played at the seventh, on the 7th of August at Fort Lauderdale. So, you know, over there in Florida, a couple of, couple of T20 games will be played. So hopefully the fans will go out there and support them. So once again, to run through it, uh, the, the three ODIs will be played at uh, Queen's Park Oval. Right, Queen's Park Oval will be getting the three ODIs. Uh, we're talking about the 22nd, 24th, and the 23rd. Now, the, 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 the T20 games now, the first one, uh, the first two, well, the first one will be played at the Brian Charles Lara Stadium. Right, Brian Charles Lara Stadium. The second one at Warner Park Uh uh, the, the, the third one at Warner Park and the final two will be played in Fort Lauderdale. So, yeah, it's only left for West Indies um, CWI to come out and confirm it. We know they are always um, pulling their leg behind, you know, like like what old people would say, you know, Axie. They always, they always join their legs behind, but um, that is a confirmation coming out of India. So, yeah, that is it for this one, my viewers and subscribers. Zane, go and leave it right here for now. Later on, we touch base again. Big up.